it's probably going to be most stuff most everybody knows because there is tons of information out there when i first started to research him to get a little bit of background i was just blown away by the interviews and all of the write-ups about him the histories the biographies i was like oh my goodness you could talk for an hour on this man and not cover everything <laughs> it's crazy um but out of the interviews it um i found a couple that published um, verbatim uh, his answers and you get uh, it gave like a really strong sense of who he was that um, yes he was a pacifist but he also had a very certain mind um, a very strong artistic side and he wrote over 20,000 poems which is just mind-blowing um, and of those 4,000 were published in magazines and he's had over 50 collections published during his life and another 12 afterwards but um, he also had a very common sense um, side to him very down to earth people would write to him write send him poems he would write back and there were thousands of people that wrote to him and he took out the time to respond to them which is incredible in itself so he was like a poet laureate before he was ever a poet laureate <laughs> it, was just, it was crazy just reading all this stuff and you know he, he also had, had um, which I can understand but also kind of like not understand at the same time how he separated his writing from his family um, they didn't even preview it before he sent it out it was just his and his you know vault and some of the collections that were published after he had passed were from a box that he had labeled abandoned poems where you know he thought it was good at the time maybe maybe not and just put it in there for the rainy day type of stuff so um just you know incredible amount of energy um, towards writing and the arts and um towards trying to make things better, peace through poetry, to create the, the bond and understanding and, you know, where there were divisions and fences to break those down and create the common ground. And a lot of those are reflected in these poems and it's almost like a, a time capsule of not just him, but also what was going on, the, the mindset of the era. And so this, this book is a really incredible collection, but, um, I mean, if all of this other stuff is just like this thing, you could just, it, it's mind blowing. Um, so anyways, I'm not gonna, I selected a lot of poems. It was very hard to choose just a few. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to read the whole book, but um, I will get to those. And another thing I liked about this book is in the front, the title poem in his own handwriting, uh, the rough draft of it, um, which I thought was a pretty cool thing to include. And so these are from his book, Ask Me. A short story that could be true. If you were exchanged in the cradle and your real mother died without ever telling the story, then no one knows your name. And somewhere in the world, your father is lost and needs you, but you are far away. He can never find how true you are, how ready. When the great wind comes and the robberies of the rain, you stand on the corner shivering. The people who go by, you wonder if they're calm. They miss the whisper that runs any day in your mind. Who are you really, wanderer? And the answer you, you have to give, no matter how dark and cold the world around you is, maybe I'm a king. And this one is the title poem, Ask Me. Sometime when the river is ice, ask me mistakes I have made. Ask me whether what I have done in my life. Others have come in their slow way into my thought, and some have tried to help or hurt. Ask me what difference their strongest love or hate has made. I will listen to what you say. You and I can turn and look at the silent river and wait. We know the current is there, hidden, and there are comings and goings from miles away that hold the stillness exactly before us. 
What the river says, that is what I say. You guys can clap after each one, that's cool, or if you just want to like save your hands and do one big round at the end, that's cool. awesome as well. Okay. <laughs> the way it is. There's a thread you follow. It goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wander about uh, what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread, but it's hard for others to see. While you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen, people get hurt or die, and you suffer and get old. Nothing you can do stops at times unfolding. You don't ever let go of the thread. <laughs> this one's one of the bigger ones in the book. and um, A lot of his work is very daring, and um, even though he writes in an open demonic way, which I think has really helped a lot of people connect to his work. Um, some of uh, the topics he's just like, takes on a perspective most people wouldn't consider, but then when it's in front of them, it's like, wow. <laughs> and there was um, even a quote in there about a uh, reading that he was at, and one of the, the people in the audience um, had said, well, I could have written that. And he's like, well, you didn't. <laughs> but you could have. You could write your own poem. You know? <laughs> okay, and the message from the wanderer. <clears throat> Today, outside your prison, I stand and rattle my walking stick. Prisoners, listen. You have relatives outside, and there are thousands of ways to escape. Years ago, I bent my skills to keep my cell locked, and chains smuggled to me in pies, and shouted my plans to jailers. But always new plans occurred to me, or the new um, heavy locks bent hinges off, or some stupid jailer would forget and leave the keys. Inside I dreamed of constellations, those feeding creatures outlined by stars, their skeletons, a darkness between jewels, heroes that exist only where they are not. Thus freedom always came nibbling my thought, just as often in light upon the open hills, you can pass an antelope and not know and look back. And then even before you see, there is something wrong about the grass. And then you see. That's the way everything in the world is waiting. Now these few more words and then I'm gone. Tell everyone just to remember their names and remind others later when we find each other. Tell the little ones to cry and then go to sleep, curled up where they can. And if any of us get lost, if any of us cannot come all the way, remember, there will come a time when all we have said and all we have hoped will be all right. There will be that form in the grass. And this one um, is another interesting one, Mein Kampf which is German for my struggle, um, is I really connected with this particular piece. In those reaches of the night when your thoughts burrow in, or at some stabbed interval pinned by a recollection in daylight, a better self begs its hands out to you. That bitter tracery your life wove looms forth, and the jagged times haggle and excruciate your reaching palms again. A dull knife hurts most. Only mistakes come calling. No life happens just once. Whatever snags even the edge of your days will abide. You are a turtle with all the years on your back. Your head sinks down into the mud. You must bear it. You need a thick shell in that rain. You reading this, be ready. Starting here, what do you rem want to remember? How sunlight creeps along a shining floor? What scent of old wood hovers? What softened sound from outside fills the air? Will you ever bring a better gift for the world than the breathing respect that you carry wherever you go right now? Are you waiting for a time to show some 
better thoughts. <clears throat> when you turn around, starting here, lift this new glimpse that you found. Carry into evening all that you want from this day. The interval you spent reading or hearing this, keep it for life. When can anyone give you the greater than now? Starting here, right in this room, when you turn around. Why I'm happy. Now, now has come an easy time. I let it roll. There is a lake somewhere so blue and far nobody owns it. A wind comes by and a willow listens gracefully. I hear all of this. Every summer I laugh and cry for every turn of the world is terribly cold and a sense been. The lake stays blue and free. It goes on and on. And I know where it is. Assurance. You will never be alone. You hear so deep a sound when autumn comes. Yellow poles across the hills and thrums, where the silence after lightning before it says its name, and the clouds wide mouthed apologies. You are aimed from birth. You will never be alone. Rain will come, a gutter filled, an Amazon, long aisles. You never heard so deep a sound moss on rock and ears. You turn your head. That's what the silent meant. You are not alone. The whole wide world pours down. Like I said, it is so easy just to read the whole. <laughs> this one, um, this uh, poem really reflects the, the down-to-earth common sense side of him. Um, that you know it's hard to to imagine somebody being so creative and artistic and prolific in that and being also um just so rational and organized and you know that he was an incredible mind and he used it very well <laughs> the little ways that encourage good fortune wisdom is having the right things in your life and knowing why if you do not have things right in your life, you will be overwhelmed. You may be heroic, but you will not be wise. If you have things right in your life, but do not know why, you are just lucky, and you will not move in the little ways that encourage good fortune. The saddest are those not right in their lives who are acting to make things right for others. They act only from the self, and that self will never be right. No luck, no help, no wisdom. The Objector In line at lunch, I cross my fork and spoon to ward off complicity, the, or, uh, the ordered life our leaders have offered us. Thin as knife, our chance to live depends on such a sign while others talk and the pentagon from the moon is bouncing exact commands. Forget your faith. Be ready for whatever it takes to win. We face annihilation unless all citizens get in line. I bow and cross my fork and spoon. Somewhere other citizens more fearfully bow in a place terrorized by their kind of oppressive state. Our signs both mean your hostages over there will never be slaughtered by my act. Our vows cross never to kill and call it fate. This one is an excellent example of the bridges that he tried to create amongst people and the understanding, um, shifting of perspectives to open eyes. For the unknown enemy, this monument is for the unknown good in our enemies. Like a picture, their life began to appear. They gathered at home in the evening and sang. Above their fields, they saw a new sky. A holiday came, and they carried the baby to the park for a party. Sunlight surrounded them. Here we glimpse what our minds long turned away from. The great mutual blindness darkened that sunlight in the park, 
and the sky that was new and the holidays. This monument that one afternoon we stood here letting a part of our minds escape, they came back but different. Enemy, one day we glimpsed your life. This monument is for you. These mornings, watch our smoke curl up out of the chimney into the canyon channel of air. The wind shakes it free over the trees and hurries into nothing. Today there is more smoke in the world than ever before. There are more cities going into the sky, helplessly, than ever before. The cities today are going away into the sky, and what is left is going into the earth. This is what happens when a city is bombed. Part of that city goes away into the sky, and part of that city goes into the earth. And that is what happens to people when a city is bombed. Part of them goes away into the sky, and part of them goes into the earth. And what is left for us between the sky and the earth is a scar. <laughs> Poetry. Its door opens near me. It's a shrine by the road. It's a flower in the parking lot of the Pentagon. It says, look around, listen, feel the air. It interrupts national, international telephone lines with a tune. When traffic lines jam, it gets out and dances on the bridge. If great people get distracted by fame, they forget this essential kind of breathing and they die inside their gold shell. When caravans cross deserts, it is the secret treasure hidden under the jewels. Sometimes commanders take us over and they try to impose their whole universe how to succeed by daily calculation. I can't eat that bread. This one is called Bess, it is a very, very touching um, poem. Ours are the streets where Bess first met her cancer. She went to work every day past the secure houses. At her job in the library, she arranged better and better flowers, and when students asked for books, her hand went out to help. In the last year of her life, she had to keep her friends from knowing how happy they were. She listened while they complained about food or work or the weather, and the great national events danced their grotesque fake importance, always. Pain moved where she moved. She walked ahead, it came. She hid, it found her. No one ever served another so truly. No enemy ever meant so strong a hate. It was almost as if there was no room left for her on earth but she remembered where joy used to live. She straightened its flowers. She did not weep when she passed its houses. And when finally she pulled into a tiny corner and slipped from pain, her hand opened again and the streets opened and she wished all well. I know. <laughs> and this was one that Kathy had actually, this is her book I borrowed. <laughs> Um, that she had marked off and I thought that this was just a beautiful way to wrap things up and it's called Climbing Along the River. Willows never forget how it feels to be young. Do you remember where you came from? Gravel remembers. Even the upper end of the river believes in the ocean. Exactly at midnight yesterday sides away. What I believe is all animals have one soul. Over the land they love, they crisscross forever. Thank you.